Spilling the Tea Susie went to study for her university exam at a coffee shop. She ordered a white tea and sat down. Ten minutes later, she got up to go to the bathroom. When she returned, her laptop wouldn't turn on and her teacup was empty. Someone had spilled the tea on her computer and cleaned it up. She called the manager, told him what happened, and they came up with three suspects. The barista said he had been swamped and didn't see anything. The supervisor said he was sorry that the milky tea spilled on the computer, and he could see if insurance would cover the cost. The head barista said he was sorry the milky tea spilled on her laptop, and he'd make her another one while they waited for the police to arrive. Immediately, the store manager knew who did it. It was the supervisor. He couldn't have known that the tea had milk in it since it was cleaned up. The only person who remembered the order was the one who prepared it. The missing phone We're at the coffee shop again. This time, Stuart forgot his phone on the table when he left. But once he realized and came back, his phone was gone. He saw a guy running outside the store, and Stuart chased him. When he caught him, Stuart said, I've lost my device. Did you take it by accident? The man replied, I have no idea where your phone is, sir. I was just grabbing coffee. Stuart immediately called the police. Why? Stuart told him he lost his device. That could have been anything from a smartwatch to a camera or something else. The guy couldn't have known it was a phone unless he took it. Where did the baker go? The Cupcakes Den is a local shop that became famous for its tasty, well, you guessed it, cupcakes. On Monday morning, the head baker vanished, and the shop couldn't deliver the 200 cupcakes they had promised for a birthday party. The owner called the police, and they had three suspects in their custody. The helper said he had gone out to buy more frosting, but when he returned, the baker was gone. The waiter said he had been cleaning the shop of the massive mess from making the 200 cupcakes. The manager said he was meeting with a new supplier to get more beef jerky at the shop. The detectives knew who was lying. Can you guess it? It's the manager. Who needs beef jerky at a cupcake shop? Get the last question right. Adam was taking part in a brain teaser TV game show, and he had one last question to answer before winning $50,000. He was tired and decided to call his best friend, Luke, to help him. The host asked, if you could rearrange the order of the letters in this word, A-C-I-P-C-I-F, what does it show? A country, a city, a large mountain, or an ocean? Luke answered correctly. Can you? An ocean. If you unscramble the word, it shows Pacific. Where's he hiding? Martin vanished one morning, and his family called the police. Detectives searched everywhere and questioned 15 people, but none of them gave any untruthful answers. His son Jake found a letter from his dad saying, If you love me, you'll find me. He went to his father's office to see if he could find any clues. He was looking around the room and immediately knew where his father was hiding. Can you guess it? On the wall, there's a picture frame with his dad's cabin, and it's got a hand-drawn circle on it. He must be there. Lost in an underwater cave Sarah just got her certificate as a cave diver. She decided to spend her afternoon exploring some dangerous underwater ocean caves. While turning left and right, she got lost. She didn't have enough time to look for her way back and continued swimming further. That was when she came across three openings. Through the first, there were 45 hungry piranhas. Through the second, a great white shark. And through the last one, a giant box jellyfish. 
which is the safest path? The first one! Piranhas are freshwater fish. They can't survive in salt water. The van. Susan was outside watering her plants when she noticed three people dressed in black clothing carrying electronic devices from her neighbor's home. She asked them what they were doing. And they said they were from a moving company. Immediately, Susan called the police. Why? There were no license plates on the van, and movers don't only carry electronic equipment, but all sorts of stuff. The Prison Escape One morning, Detective Smith was called into a maximum security prison to discover how three men had managed to escape from their cells. The prisoners could neither see nor talk to each other, but they arranged their escape together. They went to the shower room at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And only one person was allowed in at different periods. How did they manage to communicate and escape? They wrote messages to each other on the bathroom mirrors, used steam to read them, and planned their escape together. Cassie won a trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives. She goes there on a boat along with three other hotel guests. One of these billionaires is fake. Can you guess who? This guy sneaks silverware from the buffet and puts it in his bag. If he's really rich, why would he need that? Speaking of imposters, one of the boat crew members doesn't belong here. Can you guess who? This waitress hides a police badge under her floral garland. So she's probably working undercover. Finally, Cassie comes ashore. Three porters offer to carry her suitcase. Can you help her choose the right guy? The first guy is a runaway criminal. See this poster on the pier? The second guy is a ghost. He's too transparent for a human being. Therefore, Cassie should choose the third guy. The hotel manager offers Cassie three options to choose from. A room on the eighth floor with a gorgeous sea view. A luxurious apartment on the second floor with a garden view. Or a separate authentic bungalow on the shore. What would you choose? The first option doesn't exist because the hotel is only a five-story and there's neither an air conditioner nor a fan inside this bungalow. So Cassie should choose the second option. On the beach, Cassie meets triplets, Sienna, Gemma, and Emma. Emma borrows $20 from Cassie. The next morning, Cassie meets one of the triplets in the lobby, but they're so identical that Cassie can't distinguish them. We know for sure that Sienna always tells the truth, while Gemma and Emma always lie. What three-word question should Cassie ask in order to get back her $20? The correct question is, are you Gemma? Sienna, who only speaks the truth, would say no. Gemma, who always lies, would also say no. And Emma would say yes, because she's a liar. Therefore, if the answer is yes, Cassie can demand her money. And if the answer is no, Cassie can ask Sienna or Gemma to remind Emma about her debt. After breakfast, Cassie goes diving. She sees a lot of identical clownfish underwater, but one of them doesn't belong here. Can you spot the odd fish out? This one over here. Underwater, Cassie finds a treasure chest. 
but it's locked. Can you help her crack the combination lock? There are three turtles painted on the treasure chest. Each turtle has a certain number of rings on its shell. It's a hint. If we count the rings, she'll get the code. Eight, four, five. Cassie opens the treasure chest and finds a pearl necklace. She goes to the local jewelry market hoping to sell it. John says, This jewelry is not so precious, but I can offer you $50 for one pearl. Noah says, Trash! These pearls are fake! $5! This is my last price! And Mia says, Madam, we can sell it at auction. Rich guys will pay hundreds of dollars for this necklace. I can be your agent and take 15% of the revenue. What do you say? One of these guys is a scammer. Can you guess who? Noah is wearing another person's work badge. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's identity. Cassie wants to buy a new swimsuit. She walks into a fitting room and sees these three pairs of legs. Can you guess who's broke? All three women have relatively new sandals, but let's take a look at their toenails. The first lady has an excellent fresh pedicure. The second one doesn't have any nail polish, but maybe she just prefers to look au naturel. And the third lady has toenails with peeled nail polish. Therefore, she's the one who's broke. In the hotel lobby, Cassie meets two of her roommates, Tina and Jeff. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who just by looking at this picture? Tina is a werewolf. She has handcuffs on her leg. Time to go to your room and get some rest. But uh-oh, the elevator you entered is a trap. It takes you to the hotel's basement, where three doors appear in front of you. The first door takes you to the Amazon rainforest, with green anacondas, electric eels, and poison dart frogs. The second takes you to the Antarctic circumpolar current, the largest and most potent current globally. The third takes you to the top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. It's the tallest mountain and largest volcano in the world that goes below sea level. Only one of them takes you to a safe place. Which one? You've got six seconds. Pick the third door. Mauna Kea is a dormant volcano, and it stopped erupting hundreds of thousands of years ago. So you're safe. You've made it out of the shady cave and you need to go to your room. As soon as you enter, the lights go off, and you hear bars lowering to the floor and huge chains shaking. You use your arms to navigate around and come across dots on the wooden floor. You run your fingers through them. It's Braille. And it reads, One of the three magic mushrooms on this table will help you leave this place. Pick wisely. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in this dark room forever. The mushrooms on the left will make you super strong and provides healing powers. The one in the middle will bring the electricity back, and you'll be able to see. The one on the right will make you small and invisible. You've got five seconds to pick the right mushroom. Turning the lights on won't free you. And becoming invisible doesn't mean you won't bump into walls. The best option is the strength and healing mushroom. You can bang on the walls and bars until you break them. The next day rolls around. You head into the parking lot to pick up your car. But the car seems to be locked. There's a three-digit pin code lock on the passenger side door. On the side of the device, you read a clue. ABC equals 123. On the ground, there's a piece of paper that reads BAD. Use the clue to find pin code numbers. 
Here are your 4 seconds. The code is 214. B is the second letter, A is the first, and D is the fourth. Now that you've got your car, time to do some shopping at the mall. You visit a jewelry shop. You discover it has a mysterious extension leading to a room filled with gold coins, diamonds, and other expensive metals. As soon as the owner spots you, he traps you in the room and locks the door. Nice shop. He tells you there's only one way to survive in that dark chamber. You must eat one muffin. If you eat the wrong one, you won't make it. But if you pick the right one, you'll be free to go. The first muffin turns you into moss. The second one turns you into a badger. The third muffin will turn you into a snake. Three seconds. Moss can't survive without the sun for long, and snakes need the sun to regulate their body's temperature. The correct answer is the muffin that turns you into a badger. These creatures spend long periods in the dark. The mayor of the town calls you into his office. He politely ignores the fact that you are now a badger. He says that something mysterious is going on inside one of the town's restaurants. Everyone has turned into a zombie. Only one human is left in the bar, and you must save them. But first, you have to identify them. You're shown a photo with three people. Only one of them is human. You've got three seconds. It's the lady on the right. It looks like the red spot on her shirt came from her hot dog. The lady on the left is missing part of her ear. Now the mayor takes you to the local school. The principal needs to decide which of the students deserves to go to space camp next summer. She picked all the students that got A's on their report cards and gave each of them a bean. She said, the person who will return with the tallest bean plant will win the prize. But you can't cheat. All kids came back with large plant pots and bean plants filled with smaller beans. Only one girl returned with a plant pot filled with soil. As soon as the principal saw her pot, he gave her the prize. Why? Here are your three seconds. The teacher gave them cold cooked beans. They couldn't have sprouted unless the students cheated. And these guys all got A's, huh? Makes you wonder. A call to the police. Amanda was going through a deserted park when someone hit her on the head. When she recovered, her bag, along with her phone, money, and documents were gone. There were no people around but for one elderly lady. Amanda rushed toward her, explained the situation, and asked to call the police. The lady told her not to worry and started to press 911 on her phone. After talking for a minute, she said, They're going to be here in no time. As soon as Amanda heard these words, she sprinted off. Why? Amanda saw the lady's phone didn't have any signal. Then how could she call the police? A suspicious senior citizen. A date. Betty was on cloud nine after two guys asked her out. But she felt she couldn't give hope to both of them. She had to choose one. Stephen was her secret crush. From a rich family, handsome and smart. She'd been dreaming about him for a year. John was a good guy too. She knew for sure he was kind and funny. The girl was at a loss. Which one should she pick? Any ideas? Betty should go for John. Stephen isn't serious about her. He has a lipstick mark on his neck, left there by Stanley. So yeah, better choose John. A bizarre code. Brian's friends invited him to spend the summer vacation in Europe with them. Unfortunately, the guy had serious study problems. To punish him, his dad took his passport away and locked it in a safe. The only way for Brian to get his documents and have some fun was to crack the code. Yeah, we still don't want to crack the books, huh? When he sneaked into his dad's study, he saw a piece of paper stuck to the safe. 
there were three drawings on it. A rose, a rainbow, a calico cat, and a banana. Brian thought for a while and then pressed four numbers. The code was correct and the safe opened. Which numbers were they? Two, seven, three, one. Each digit corresponds to the numbers of colors of the objects in the picture. An anxious husband. A man called the police. He could hardly talk. My wife! She got into a car accident! When the police arrived, the woman had been already rushed to a hospital. The detectives found out that she had crashed into a tree right next to her house. The car was beyond repair. One of the police officers examined the vehicle and saw the woman's bag. Inside, he found her driver's license and car keys, some money and bank cards, a notebook and her passport. After that, the husband was immediately arrested. Why? 2 could the woman's car key be in her bag if she was driving? That's a good question. Find the thief. Detective Lawrence was walking along the street when he heard someone screaming. He rushed over there and saw a teenager crying. What happened? I was talking to my friend when someone grabbed my phone and pushed me to the ground. When I came to my senses, there was no one around. But I saw that cafe's door closing. The detective entered the cafe the girl was talking about and looked around. There were five people inside. All of them seemed to be rather decent. Can you figure out who's the criminal? 2-7-3-1 It's the man near the coffee machine. His drink is still steaming. It means he just bought it. A crime in the neighborhood. One day, Mr. Martin called the police. His car was stolen right from the street outside his house. The detective questioned three suspects. Eric, a teenager who lived next door, said he had been at school and had seen nothing suspicious. Amy, a young artist renting a house across the street, had been too engrossed in her work to pay attention to her surroundings. But Mr. Brandon, an elderly man whose house was next to Amy's, accused Eric of taking the car. Mr. Brandon was having his breakfast when he saw the teenager get into the vehicle and drive off. Strangely, after his words, the police officers arrested the elderly man. Why? The only thing Mr. Brandon could see out of his window during breakfast was his tall brick wall. Desperate for help. Kenneth, a newbie police officer, was walking along the street, proudly wearing his uniform. Suddenly, a pretty girl rushed toward him. Help! she screamed. I've been mugged! After Kenneth made her calm down, the girl told him her story. I was walking home from college when a man ran up to me. He hit me in the eye and took all my jewelry and money. When Kenneth heard this, he immediately realized the girl was lying. How? The girl was wearing glasses. If the criminal had hit her in the eye, her glasses would have been shattered. Once, Adam agreed to take part in a popular TV show. He had to crack logic puzzles and solve detective riddles to get $1 million. If only he knew at that moment where this decision would lead him. When the guy arrived at the venue, a staff member put a blindfold over his eyes. After that, Adam was taken someplace and left alone. After waiting in silence for a couple of minutes, the guy pulls the blindfold off. He's in a rather large room. There's nothing there except four doors. The guy feels something's wrong, but he can't grasp what exactly. And suddenly, he realizes the ceiling is going down. He needs to get out of the room and fast. He examines the doors more closely. Aha! They all have notes that describe what's behind each of them. The first one, a lake full of piranhas. The second, a room where an avalanche will happen once he sets foot inside. The third, high voltage wires hanging above a wet floor. 
The fourth is a 15th floor room with only one window. Adam knows he needs to decide fast. He opens one door and jumps inside a moment before the ceiling crashes down. Luckily, it's a safe room. Which one is it? The guy picked room number 3. The wires don't touch the water on the floor, and there's some space left between them and the ground. It means it's safe to crawl under the wires. Adam makes it to the next room and finds a note with a task on it. A coin is put into an empty bottle, which is then plugged with a cork. How can you remove the coin without breaking the bottle or pulling the cork out? Adam doesn't need much time to get the coin out. What does he do? Adam pushes the cork into the bottle and shakes the coin out. His next task is to figure out who a criminal is. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and a pair of glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. A bit further, they found the hat, coat, and glasses lying on the ground. They figured out the criminal could hide in the nearby cafe. Adam has a photo of four men, all of them cafe visitors. He needs to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. He immediately points at one man, and his answer is correct. Which man is it? It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses. It means the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip, must have got rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. The riddle is solved and Adam can go further. Soon he finds out he has to act as a detective again. A famous artist nearly finished his new painting but he had to leave for France. It was an urgent matter, and it kept the man in Paris for a week. When he returned, he discovered his work had been spoiled. Someone had spilled black paint all over it. And it happened recently, because the paint was still fresh. The artist was furious. He invited his maid, gardener, and maintenance worker and questioned them. He said, someone spoiled my painting while I was away. Do you know anything about it? I never enter your studio without your permission, the maid said. The maintenance worker added, We don't use black paint for any repairs in the house. I don't know who could do that. Gardner got angry. I've been working for you for 15 years. Do you think I could do this to you? All of them sounded sincere. But then, who spoiled the painting? Being a smart guy, Adam realizes right away the one to blame is the maintenance worker. The artist never mentioned the way the painting was spoiled. Since the answer is correct, Adam can continue. He enters a narrow hall. There, on a small table, there's a glass of orange juice. It seems to be half full, but Adam has to figure out if it's really so. How can he do it without using any measuring tools or pouring any juice out of the glass? Adam tilts the glass until the juice is just touching the rim. The bottom of the glass is invisible. So the guy concludes the glass is more than half full. If a part of the bottom was visible, it would mean the glass was less than half full. The next riddle Adam has to crack goes like this. A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34. And the next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? Adam spends 20 minutes trying to figure this puzzle out and succeeds. What is his answer?
The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. The riddle is solved, and Adam is allowed to move to the next room. In the middle, there's a large TV screen. Suddenly, it switches on. Adam sees two girls who are going down to a dark basement. No, 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 the guy whispers. That's how all horror movies start. And right he is. The door slams behind the girls' backs. It's so unexpected that Adam jumps in his seat. The girls scream. Since the power's out, one of them switches on the flashlight on her phone. They see three doors. Something's moving behind the first one. Who's there? Adam can hear one girl whispering. Her voice is trembling. It turns out that the first door hides, oh no, several hungry zombies. A big fire's ranging behind the second door. And if the girls open the third door, they'll see exposed live electrical wires. And then, a voice tells Adam, you have to say which door they should choose. If you make a mistake, they won't survive. Hmm, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Luckily, Adam is smart enough to help the girls. Which door does he pick? The third door. The power's out, and the wires are totally harmless. The next riddle Adam has to solve is a logic one. One wizard makes his prisoners choose between two doors. Behind one of them, there's an unfriendly dragon. Behind the other, a chest with gold. Pick the right door and you'll become a rich person and will be allowed to leave the castle. But if it's the wrong door, well, you aren't likely to survive. There are two signs on the doors. One always lies, the other is truthful. On the first door, it's written, the treasure is here, the dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, the treasure and the dragon aren't in the same room. Where is the gold? The chest with the treasure is in the second room. The second statement is true, which means the first one is false. Adam knows the show must go on, but where should he go next? The room he's in has four doors, one in each of its walls. After looking around, he notices a note in the corner. He picks it up and sees a strange inscription. After thinking for a while, he opens some application on his phone, looks at it, and leaves through one of the doors. What does the inscription mean, and what application is it? Adam turned the note upside down. Now it read South. Then he used a compass app on his phone to find out which door was leading to the South. The guy found himself facing the last challenge. It was another detective case. Ruth was moving home. While she was busy with boxes, someone took her laptop. The girl went over to her new neighbors. Perhaps one of them had seen something. Eric told her he had been staying at home with a high fever for the whole day. Emma said she didn't even know a new neighbor was coming. And Jonathan explained he just got home from his office. Who took Ruth's laptop? Adam is an observant guy. He immediately noticed that Jonathan's car was covered with a thick layer of snow. The man lied. He wasn't at work. The safe's open. Justin sees a folder with the case he needs to solve next. Mr. White, a rich businessman, disappeared from his bedroom. But he managed to leave a note. It read, The 1st of July, the 4th of January, the 1st of December, the 8th of February. The police questioned the people who were in the house at that time. Judy, Mr. White's wife, said, I'm shocked! My husband was always so careful. Sadly, I don't know anything. I was away staying at my parents. 
Logan, Mr. White's secretary, told the police he had been working on the report for his boss and hadn't left his study. And Rose, Mr. White's daughter, answered, I was having guests. We didn't leave my room. The case is still unsolved. Can Justin crack it? The one behind Mr. White's disappearance is his wife. The 1st of July means the letter J, the 4th of January, U, the 1st of December, D, and the 8th of February, Y. All together, it's Judy. The next day, Justin was questioning Mary, a suspect in a tricky smuggling case. The girl refused to talk. At some moment, she shouted, Right now, I'd drown my phone in this cup filled with coffee and you'll never find out the truth. But Justin was totally unbothered by her threat. Why? The cup was filled with coffee beans. They would do no harm to the gadget. A shoe shiner was arrested and taken to the police station where Justin worked. The man was shouting he was an honest person. He cleaned people's shoes for free. His clients paid him of their own will. But Justin soon realized which trick the shoe shiner used. The man cleaned one shoe for free. Nobody wanted to look untidy in just one clean shoe, and paid him for shining the other one. Once, Justin's boss called his wife and told her he'd come back home at 8 o'clock. They had no plans for the evening whatsoever. The man was at home almost on time, at 5 minutes past 8. But his wife was furious. The boss was confused. When he came to work the next day, he asked Justin to explain to him why his wife had been so angry. Justin told his boss, Well, your wife expected you to come home at 8 p.m., but you came at 8 in the morning. Justin was sent to patrol the streets. While walking, he saw a weird picture. A man went out of a house with a bucket of water, shouted, and poured this water on the sidewalk. It took Justin some time to figure out why he had done it. The man had been planning to wash his car. But while he was away, it got stolen. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. And Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there. But by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said that he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boot. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third security guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. Justin's next suspect was a young woman. The guy hadn't seen her yet, but he had her photo. When he was looking at this picture, he felt something was wrong, but couldn't figure out what exactly. Then, all of a sudden, it dawned on him. What did Justin realize? The girl was inside the house, but the door was blocked from the outside. How did she get in and out of the house? Through the second floor window? Unlikely. A notorious criminal escaped from a 150-foot tower. 
Someone had managed to get him a pair of scissors and a rope. Justin found out that the rope was just 75 feet long, and the criminal had cut it in the middle. Now, the future detective needs to understand how it helped the man get away. The criminal indeed cut the rope in the middle, but not across. He made the cut along the rope, tied its two parts together, and got down to the ground without any problems. When you take the hole from me, there's still some left. What am I? Both you and your sister answer wholesome. The man smiles again and lets you go. Now you have to find the exit, and you have no idea where to go. You randomly take turns and, in the end, you get lost in the building's labyrinth. After half an hour of wandering around, you realize that you've been going around in circles. You admit that you're lost and can't find a way out. Suddenly, from each of the three directions before you, a man appears. Each man says he was kidnapped too, but escaped and will show you the exit, while the other two men are guardians and will lead you back to your kidnappers. Who should you trust? You notice that the second man has bruises from the handcuffs on his arms, so you decide to believe him. You look at your sister and realize that she noticed it too. You nod, and each of you walks towards one of the other two, and unexpectedly for them, knock them out. The man gives you thumbs up and tells you to follow him. You're back in the labyrinth again, taking turns over and over. Does he really know where to go? How much time did he spend here? You even start worrying if you made the right choice, but then you bump into a massive metal door. To open it, you need to enter the password. But lucky you, there's a hint again. The note is saying 5th of March, 1st of October, 2nd of April, 4th of November. That's why the man was wandering around looking for someone. He couldn't crack the code. Can you? The 5th of March means the 5th letter of the word March, which is H. Similarly, the 1st letter of October is O, the 2nd of April is P, and the 4th of November is E. The password is HOPE. You type it and yes, it works! Great job! The lock clicks and you pull the heavy door open. You did it! You are outside once more. It's early morning, so you spent the whole night inside. But wait, can you hear it? Footsteps! They're after you, and you have to run to a safe place immediately. There are three ways. On the left, there's a dark forest. Straight, there's a city. And on the right, a lake. Which way will you choose? You should definitely run straight to the city where there are people around. So, what are you waiting for? Run! <laughs>